So we have an inventory in which we can drag around our items, and that is all well and good. And for the most part, that'll probably cover whatever you need to do. But I want to take this a step further, and I want to go like full Minecraft system where we have the ability to split our stacks. Meaning that if we have these 11 rocks here, I want to be able to right click and drag rather than left click and drag, which I can already do, and split this stack up into two separate stacks. This is where things become a little bit more complicated because we're going to have to think about a lot of edge cases, and that's always a nightmare. So let's dive right into it. We're going to be doing most of this in the item slot again. Uh, if you haven't seen the last part of the series, I do highly recommend just going back to the start of the series to begin with. Uh, but especially for this one, you do want to have the context of the last part where we set up all the drag and drop stuff. We're also going to uh, pull up our inventory components because we're going to make a couple of functions on that. We've got a swap slots function already, which works perfectly fine. But now what we need is something to split a stack. So something that will take in a stack, split it in half, remove the half that we split away, and output the new stack which has that half if that makes any sense. If it doesn't, hopefully it will as we go along. So let's make a split stack. And for this, we are simply going to uh, require an input for the slot index that we're going to be splitting. And that will be our integer. We'll simply use our inventory here and get a reference let's do a reference because we're going to be directly influencing it anyway to whatever slot that we're working with and what we're going to be doing here is we want to uh, break open that inventory slot to get all the information out of it and we'll get the stack size and first and foremost check whether or not it is greater than one because if it is not greater than one uh, there's nothing to be split here and we're just going to do nothing so if that is the case, we simply uh, return and our outputs will include the split stack, which will be a inventory slot. And just for readability, really, this isn't really going to do anything, but for readability, I like to just like make one that I can see is entirely empty. Uh, we do want to uh, pull through the slot index in this case, though, so we actually do need to make one. If it is greater than 1, what we want to do is we want to get our stack size and divide it by 2. This will be a rounded division because we're working entirely with integers and that is, for our case, uh, really funny. But you should be aware that that means that if we have 11 items, one of our stacks, either the split stack or the original item slot is going to have six items and the other one five so we do want to keep track of that in some way shape or form and the way we're going to do that is uh the result out of this division we will subtract from the original stack and then also use as the return value so that it always matches up uh, and the way we're going to do that is by set var by ref of course if that branch is true and the value here, we're also going to uh, simply make a value. And this will be uh, quite simple because it will be the same values that we have. So has item is going to be has item. Stack size we'll get to in a moment. The item asset itself is going to be the same. And the index is going to be the same. Uh, but the stack size, we're going to take our stack size and subtract from that our stack size divided by 2. And this gets very messy very quickly. Uh, so do be aware of where all of these lines lead. After that, we will add another return node, which requires us to make another return split stack. So let's just copy over the make inventory slot. That will be our return. And our return will be exactly the same again as our original. So has item being the same. The stack size will be our output from our stack size divided by two. The item asset will be the same, and the item index. And actually, uh, I made a little bit of a mistake. What we want to do is we want to promote the output from this to uh, a local variable. Let's call that to subtract. 
which of course will only do if the output from this branch node is true and we'll subtract that from uh, here because of what was happening i'll just tell you right now i didn't think about that while recording this uh, is we're setting of course the structure here to its new value so by the time we get to this return node it's just looking back through uh, this string over here to this uh, data asset to the already newly updated value and it's then dividing that by two as well so by instead of doing that saving this as a separate integer variable we can just put that into the stack size for our return value here and that will work a lot better and for the source index here in the split stack function uh, we might as well pull through the original one as well so we have a easy reference to that and this will allow us to uh, calculate a stack split which is the first and most important thing that we're going to be doing so now that we have this let's go back into our item slots and on our preview mouse button down here we want to check if it's not our left mouse button we want to check if it is our right mouse button so again you can just click on this little icon and press your right mouse button and it will just fill that in for you which is very very nice and we connect everything up as you expect and then we detect a drag and this time we're going to be dragging the right mouse button works the exact same again and the return value will now be the output from this node instead so this way if we go into our on uh drag detected function we can now check for is mouse button left down again which does what we programmed previously uh but that also passes through the value of our mouse button but we can also check whether or not it was the right mouse button that is being dragged because this pointer event just passes through the value of whatever key or in this case mouse button is being used so we can make a new branch for that and really this will kind of be doing the same thing uh so sweet it's not that complicated we just create a new operation here uh, and it's only for the dragging and dropping bits that we need to add in some changes because instead of just copying over the inventory slot that's obviously not what we want to do what we want to do is we want to get our inventory component and we want to uh, split the stack in this inventory so we use our inventory slot here uh, and we're going to break that up so that we can get the index out of it it will now split up our item stack meaning that it will remove the proper amount of items from the stack that we're right clicking on and then it will return to us the split stack that we have taken away from it so that is going to be the thing that we uh, put into the input here and just to test this out what we're going to do after everything is connected up uh, that should be in the true not in the false that's my bad and much the same this should also be connected up again you just want to copy what happens up here down here but with different mouse buttons it's quite simple and with all that we should be able to pick up a couple of rocks here open up our inventory and see we have a uh, 10 and if i right click drag you should see now that is five and this will still work um as the normal moving because we haven't implemented any code uh, other than that for it yet now i do think in this split stack what we maybe want to do and this is entirely up to you but as you could see a moment ago the inventory stack itself doesn't update it doesn't become less until we actually put down our items in another slot which i don't like so what i'm going to do is at the end here i'm also going to uh, call on inventory change and with that we should now see that it immediately updates so i'm dragging around two and this one uh, now only has three still though uh we don't have the ability to place our split stack into a new slot so let's get into working on that and for that we're going to go back into our item slot here and we're going to now go into on dropped and here we're going to add some new uh, stuff i'm going to first and foremost get rid of this print string which i added in the last episode for some troubleshooting and now we want to see uh, whether or not we are left 
click dragging and dropping or right click dragging and dropping because that does make a certain amount of difference and this is also where we're going to have to code in quite a lot of our edge cases so we're going to spend quite a lot of time in this function here today uh, first and foremost we want to get our pointer event and we want to get the affecting button and we want to check whether the affecting button here is equal to our left click uh, because if it is we're just going to do what we have programmed in before and that's just swapping the slots around but if it is a right click we want to do something else obviously and we'll get into what that is in a minute because uh we want to again get a facting button and check if it is equal to a right click instead for the most part we can assume if it's not a left click it will be a right click but there's no real harm in double checking uh, if there's somehow like a middle click thing going on which uh, you don't want to have any behavior it won't do anything uh, with this setup now and here we want to check first and foremost whether or not we are going to put this into a slot that has no items in it at all because in a moment we're also going to want to check whether or not we want to maybe merge with an existing stack which may or may not be the next video depending on how long this takes so we check our inventory slot that we're dragging onto which is this one and we'll uh, break this open or just split the structure pin that works as well and we also want to check uh, if has item already first we're going to implement the code for there not being an item in this slot yet because that's the easiest thing to work with going back into our inventory component let's make a function for that and that is um put in new stack we'll just simply call it like that and the input for that is going to be the inventory slot index we just want to check that one index which will of course be a integer and we'll simply say hey get our inventory array and we'll set the array element to whatever item we'll also input into that index and that's kind of all there is to it for this i'm not going to lie to you it is a very simple function <laughs> of course we do want to also call on inventory change to you in our inventory uh, item slot we'll get our inventory components and if there is no item yet it, we will set new uh, put in new stack is what we call it we'll use the inventory slot index that we have here and now we need a way to get the item stack uh, into that new slot so let's take a look at the best way to do that the easiest way to do that is just to go into our uh, drag and drop operation here and also add that as a potential thing that we might be sending through with it so we'll call that the inventory stack and that will be of type inventory slot we want to make an instance editable and expose on spawn now if we refresh these nodes real quick we'll see that we now have the inventory stack in there as a option for these two nodes for the top one we're here not going to really use that because we're using the index based system which is a lot more robust but for the bottom one which is the split stack it is very nice to be able to use the split stack output from the function that we made as a input into our uh, drag and drop operation because then if we go back into our on drop what we can do is we can get from that cast to uh, drag inventory slot we can get the inventory stack as just a whole thing and we can just use that to uh, put our item in a new stack and only if there is not already an item in there so now i can once again pick up some rocks i probably should make this easier for testing purposes i've got 10 rocks and i can drag and drop five of them into this new slot and i can drag and drop two of them into this new slot and so on and so forth now there is one last issue that i want to uh, cover and that is if we're trying to drag this onto a item slot that already has an item there's already one item taken out of this stack uh, but this is going to fail and that item is just going to disappear so in case of our operation being something that we're not allowed to do we should go back to our initial item slot and add back in the amount of items that we've taken away so here if the slot already has a item uh, what we want to do is we want to run a different function and we're going to make that function on the inventory component again and that is uh, something like add item to stack we already have an add item function but that just adds an item to the first stack that it finds 
the right criteria for uh, this is going to be a function that adds a specific amount of items to a specific stack so this will take in the input uh, for the index so that is the stack index that we'll be adding to and this will also take in a integer for the amount to add and this can be relatively uh, simple what we'll do is we will uh, get a a copy or a reference it doesn't really matter in the end uh, and we'll check that index we'll split that structure pin and then we'll also set array element on that same index and what we'll just do is we will split this structure pin too and we'll just pull through the uh, has item we'll pull through the item assets we'll pull through the index the only thing that we're going to do is the stack size is going to be our stack size uh, plus the amount to add and that will then go into our item stack size now there's one quite important thing here and that is we still don't have a method here to make sure that we are not overflowing a stack since we're going to be mostly using this for the time being as a fallback for when we try to add something to a stack and it isn't allowed to for whatever reason uh we already took it away from that stack to begin with, so adding it back in isn't going to be an issue. If you are going to use this for also merging stacks, which we'll be doing in the next episode, uh, that's going to be a little bit more troublesome. And as always, we want to call our on inventory change so we can update the visuals. Anyway, we can now simply uh, add to item stack and the stack index and amount to add we can just take simply from the inventory stack that we have here so let's break that uh, the stack size will be our amount to add and our index will be our index and when we compile that we should now be able to see if we uh, pick up a couple of rocks before they tumble uh, all over the place and uh, are gone this should be good enough uh, we can split our stack here and if i try to split the stack again i'm just taking away one and trying to put it onto a item slot that already is populated that one will then go back to its original slot and this will again go up to three as you can see let's start that out with a slightly bigger stack so we've got a stack of eight and seven and a stack of four uh this is now splitting up into a ghost stack of three and the original is four let's try to put it in here and this goes back to seven now and this goes back to four now and as you can see everything works just as you would expect it to so now we've got drag and drop operations which don't randomly delete items and we can still split things up very easily and of course we still got our left click operation that can just move items around now things can't merge together yet we're going to be looking at that in the next video really merging things together just ends up being a combination of all the things that we've already set up with a little bit of extra logic just sprinkled in to make everything work but we're really getting there we almost have a fully functioning adventure game inventory and after that we can get started on things like chests and shops and for the full course if you're watching this in the future it should be all up on the youtube channel already but if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded there will be a link down below in the description to the patreon where you can find the full course plus a little bonus episode where we go over and change some things to make some alternative ways to interact with the inventory which will be a patreon exclusive episode and a very big thank you to all of my patrons. you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page and a special thanks to my cave digger tier patrons: sergey thomas 